Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and worship him in tongues? He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He will, and just bow before him. Let's lift our voices and worship him. We praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Oh, mighty God, we worship you. Even as angels bow before you, so do we bow before you, oh God, and proclaim your greatness, your goodness. You are a mighty God. We worship you. We thank you, Lord, for highly exalting us, highly exalting us, sitting us before the right hand, sitting us, Lord, at the right hand of God the Father in Christ Jesus. Thank you for making of us ambassadors, ambassadors of Christ, oh, agents of reconciliation between man and God. It's a privilege, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, we praise your name, Lord. We exalt you. Thank you for lifting us so high. We praise you, Lord. 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 For taking mortals like us, transforming us into heavenly beings, making of us, oh God higher than angels just a little bit lower than you god sitting in you for you declare your word in you we live we move and we have our being we praise you oh god we thank you what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve so mighty but yet humbling himself to come on earth and die on the cross that we might know salvation from the power of the enemy, from the kingdom of darkness. Oh, transforming us from the kingdom of darkness unto light. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We thank you. We exalt you. We've gathered tonight, oh God, to proclaim that there is only one righteous one. You alone are worthy of our praises. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross to give us access to the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for deeming us, oh Lord, worthy enough to bear you in us, for you dwell in us, the fullness of divinity. We thank you, Lord God, for letting go of your son to shed his blood for our salvation. We are the privileged ones of God and we worship you. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, can you take your seat for a while? It's a privilege to be children of God. You will just stay there for a moment. You can continue slowly. It's a privilege to be children of God. Amen. Who is happy to be a child of God here? If you are happy to be saved, shout, shout a shout of joy unto Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, you walk on the streets and nobody knows you. But the invisible world knows you. The invisible world knows you. When you bow in your closet to pray to God, you don't know what you are doing to the kingdom of darkness. You don't know what you are doing into the invisible world. You don't know the power you are releasing. Hallelujah. We are supernatural beings. I am a supernatural being. You are a supernatural being. The Apostle Paul said, Oh, what a wonderful thing to be called children of God. And that is who we are. The world does not know us. Hallelujah. But we are who we are, the privileged ones of God. Amen. Uh, we are going to move from praying from to, to the second prayer topic tonight, which is praying for the finances of the brethren. 
financial freedom and prosperity for God's work. Uh, that's what we'll be praying for now. I want to share two verses. But before I get to those two verses, you know, recently I was watching a video. Uh, a man of God was sharing an experience he lived that moved him so he, he, that humbled him and challenged him. He went to this church. It's called the Redeemed Christian Church of God. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the fastest growing Pentecostal church in the world. Uh, it's, it's, its headquarters is based in Nigeria. And they are very, very wealthy. And he said he moved into the church auditorium and the ushers, the ushers, all those who were doing the, what we call in quotes, the menial jobs. He came to discover that the ushers, some of them were generals in the military. Some of them were bank owners, not bank managers, bank owners. They own banks and heavy banks, internationally represented banks, but they were ushers in church. He gave some of the names. And then he went to the restroom to ease himself. And then when he finished and he was washing his hands, he littered the place. So he was trying to clean it up. And someone came to him, so humble, and told him, sir, why are you doing this? I am here for that. That is my job. Please don't go to the... I, you are a pastor, right? He said, reverend. He called, he said, yes. I said, no, please. Go to, the, go to your seat. I will do it. You are taking my crowns. And then this man was so, this pastor was so confused. So later on, he tried to find out who the guy was. The one who was taking care of the restroom at that moment in the auditorium. And he discovered that this guy owned oil wells. He was a billionaire in dollars. But so humble. And when I listened to that testimony, I was, I was praying. And I said, God, this is what we need in the church. The Bible says we are heads and not tails. The Bible says he who was so rich became so poor for my sake so that in him I should be rich. That is my destiny. Do you know that just as Christ set you free from the power of sin, just as you hate sin the way you do, so did he set you free from the power of poverty, from the spirit of poverty. You know, there are some two verses in the Bible that baffle me a lot, and that's what I want us to see tonight. There is Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Can you put it on the, board, on the, on the, on the, on the screen, please? I just want to share briefly, I want us to spend more time praying. The little time that I have, we will use it praying. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. The power to get wealth comes from God. Hard work does not give wealth. If hard work were giving wealth, you see all the guys who are on the streets during winter cleaning the streets, they work so hard. Are they wealthy? The laborers who build structures, are they wealthy? They work so hard. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he might establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. That was the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God gave power to make wealth. In the New Testament, can you put 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 to 11? You remember this passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 to 11? We will see the equivalent of wealth in the, I mean power. God gave power in the Old Testament to make God to wealth. And, and the Bible said, Remember that God who gave you the power, who gives you the power. But in the New Testament, something else was given to us. We are above. For you know the grace. Grace. In the Old Testament, it was power. 
God gave Abraham power. God gave Jacob power. He sold and 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 and, and, and the same year he he harvested a hundredfold. God multiplied Jacob's wealth, gave him wealth even in the land of servitude. Even when Laban tried to to to, to dupe him, God gave him power and wisdom to get wealth in the new testament brethren you don't need the power it is grace it is grace for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich hallelujah can you go to chapter to verse 9 chapter 9 please chapter 9 verse 8 Take note of these two verses. Chapter 8, verse 9. You just reverse it. Chapter 9, verse 8. It explains more of this grace that chapter 8, verse 9 is talking about. The short message I'm sharing is titled The Grace Factor. Just take note of that. The Grace Factor. It is, it is, it is very important, brethren. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace. You remember the verse we just shared, chapter 8, verse 9. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Grace. Grace, brethren. That's what we'll be praying for. You know, I shared about this church where the great, where the wealthy people there are also very humble, but very wealthy. I had to travel to this country to find out what is the secret of these people. Why does the church in this country succeed so well? Why are they making it in evangelism, church planting, and so on and so forth? And I discovered it. You know, when Bishop shared here and said this year he is going to start promoting business people, businesses in the church, encouraging businesses, praying for businesses, I said that's it, he has caught it. He has caught it. No church, listen brethren, we just prayed about evangelism. The gospel is free, but the spreading of the gospel needs money. It is very expensive. It is costly. No church can make progress in church planting as we are doing. Thinking about thousands of churches to be planted. Spreading the gospel. Influencing the youth. Taking care of the poor, the needy and all that. No church can do that with tithes and offerings alone. It's not possible. The grace factor has to come in. And in the church, God raises business people. He gives them ideas. He promotes them so that they bring in the income. Because when you read this verse, when we we'll continue, we'll go to part two, you will, you will understand it. But let me just stay at this part one first. When there are businesses in the church, you agree with me that as a salaried person, your tithes and your offerings cannot equate the, the tithes and the offerings of a business person. That one is clear. These business people are raised in church, promoted by God to go out there, bring in the money so that it is used to promote the work of God. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, from verse 8 to 11, you see it there clearly. Verse 11 talks about the seed planting and the food and, 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 the, and the bread for food. So today we are going to pray about this grace thing. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. There is a grace, brethren. We are going to pray to release the grace. You know, they're always having grace. 
when I came to understand in this verse why the always having grace is. You have the always having grace. I mentioned it here. The all sufficiency grace. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always having. The always having grace. All sufficiency. The all sufficiency grace. In all things. May have an abundance. The grace for abundance. So that we can carry out every good work. It's not everybody who is called to be a business person. But the grace factor is for everybody. If you are a salaried earner, if you are somebody who, uh, who lives, who earns, who, who has a job with a salary, when you have this abundance grace on you, you have promotions that you don't explain. You have promotions that you don't explain. You have advantages that are given you that you cannot explain. The all sufficiency grace, the all abundance grace, the always having grace. That grace that is upon you, so that whenever there is a need, there is provision. That's what we want for. That's what we are we are praying for in Miracle Center. Lord, release upon us, release upon the businesses in the church that grace, release upon the brethren that grace. We release this grace for abundance we release this grace the always having grace upon the brethren the all sufficiency grace upon the brethren we release this grace lord i release it upon myself brethren it is your bread it is my bread it is our right it is our right Jesus Christ died on the cross for it. That's why I read verse eight, chapter 8 verse 9. So that you see where that grace comes from. For you know the grace that was on the Lord Jesus Christ. We read it, right? That even though he was so rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that in him we should become rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Now chapter 9 verse 8 talks on how that grace can be made manifest in my life in your life how we receive it how it is our portion it is not normal for me as a child of god not to experience this grace in the same way as i've as experienced the grace of salvation from the power of sin that makes you and i different from all those out there it is more difficult for you to sin than to live a righteous life as a child of God. That is the grace. It's the same grace that is applied in provision for me, in provision through me to the needs of the church. But the problem, the problem, brethren, is that we have accepted one aspect of the grace and we have rejected the other one. We've been, we've been paralyzed by our physical circumstances. That is the problem. The same grace that set me free from the power of sin has set me free from, the, from poverty. The same grace. Can we stand up and release that grace? Can you pray for yourself? Can you pray for the church? Can you pray for the businesses? If you are a business owner here, can you take time and release this grace on your business? I am doing it for my own business. And I see the fruits. I am telling you it works. It works. Pastor G, release it in your businesses. Josiah and Sarah, release it in your businesses. Let's release in the businesses of the brethren. The grace, they always having grace. They always having grace. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what my Bible says. They always having grace. Can we, can we just start praying for yourself? Pray for the brethren. Pray for the businesses of the church. I believe very firmly that because Bishop saw it, because Dr. Lee saw it, and they understood that they have to pray for the businesses of the church. They have to get the brethren to begin to release these brethren, this, this grace. Through the brethren, the businesses of the brethren, the funds will come to take care of that which the Lord has called us to do. And eventually, as the Lord is using you as a channel to release those graces, you too, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. So can we pray? Father, we bless you. Lord, we bless you.
Yes, Father, we give you praise and thank you, Lord, for this word, dear Jesus. Thank you for the always having grace, oh God, the always having all sufficiency in all things. Lord, we give you praise, oh God, because you're able to make all grace abound towards us. Oh, Lord, and not only able, oh God, but doing it, but willing, oh God. Lord, Father, you're making all grace abound towards us. Lord, we want to thank you, oh God. We pray that we'll always be having this grace, oh God. Always be having it, oh God, so that we're sufficient, oh Lord. Sufficient in all things. Sufficient to fund the new church building. Sufficient to feed the poor, oh God. Sufficient to evangelize the world. Sufficient, oh God, for every conference. Sufficient, oh God, that we may have an abundance, dear Lord, for every good work, oh Lord. Father, we thank Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're not, oh God, against your people having money, but you're against money having your people. Oh Lord, help us to know it, oh God. Help us to overcome the poverty mindset, Lord. The, 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 the devil has pressed upon the, the believers, oh God. That he has pressed upon them, oh God. The, through religious mindsets, oh Lord. Father, we ask you, oh God, that you will help us, dear Jesus. Jesus, help us to let go, let go of the poverty mindset, oh God. Lord, you said it, he that has a desire to be rich enters into many foolish and harmful lusts. They plunge man into destruction. Lord, it's the, it's the love for money, oh God. Lord, we don't love money, oh Lord. We're content with the things we have. We can live as we will, oh God. We can live as we do. But Lord, you're willing to give us a better life. You constantly oh god increase lord you said did you take desire you take pleasure in the prosperity of your servants oh lord you take pleasure in your prosperity lord you take us from increase to increase from glory to glory from one level to another level as it says of abraham until he was in old age and the lord had blessed him in all areas oh god give us his grace dear jesus bless us with this grace oh god the always having grace, yes, the all-sufficient grace, yes. oh God, oh, for abundance, dear for Jesus, abundance. for every grace good work, oh Lord. Oh God, give us his grace, oh God. Grant us his grace today, oh God. Empower us with this grace, oh God. Lord, impute this grace upon us, oh God. Impute this grace unto us today. Grant us this grace, dear Lord, that we may prevail, oh God. That we may, oh God, move forward, oh God. That we may be blessed, dear Jesus, to be a blessing, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God. We receive it today. We receive it today, oh God. We proclaim, Lord, we have the always having grace, the all sufficient grace for abundance for every good work, oh God. Grace us, oh God. Grant us the grace, dear Jesus. Lord, we receive it today, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Lord, did this grace Grace is our portion, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, grant Hallelujah. us double for our trouble. Hallelujah. What the devil Hallelujah. has stolen from us Hallelujah. year after year Hallelujah. after year. Hallelujah. Making us think that you didn't want to bless us. That you wanted to keep us poor. That we had to be poor to go to heaven. Father, help us today, oh God. Yes, Lord. We receive the yes, overwhelming, always having, all sufficient grace. The abundant grace. The grace for abundance, oh God. The grace for every good work, oh God. Lord, grant it to us, oh God. Lord, it will be faithful in a little giving out what we have now. Yes, Lord, you'll make us rulers over much, oh Lord. Yes, help us to do it, oh God. Empower us. Yes, Lord, bring it to pass. We trust you, Lord. The Bible says, Jesus, mighty The Bible says, the fullness of divinity dwells in me. The fullness of divinity dwells in me. Therefore, in him I am complete. Brethren, that grace is found in you. It is found in you. Hallelujah. So let us release it. You are releasing it. We are releasing it. We are not asking God to give us. He has given us already that grace. The fullness of divinity dwells in us. You just need to release it. I release the grace of abundance in me. Let it flow forth. Let it flow forth. I release the grace in me. Can we pray together, Pastor Jim? 
Yes, Lord, we release the grace of abundance in us. We release the grace of abundance. The always having grace, the all sufficiency grace, the grace for abundance. We release it. Let it flow in the name of Jesus Christ. We break every obstacle of disbelief. The fullness of divinity dwells in us in the name of Jesus Christ. Just as the Holy Spirit, just as the Spirit that hates sin dwells in me, so the Spirit of abundance, the Spirit of abundance, that grace dwells in me in the name of Jesus. I release it. I release it in the businesses of the brethren. I release it in the lives of the brethren. I release it in my businesses. I release it in my in my life. We shall not lack. The Lord is our shepherd in Miracle Center. We shall not lack. That grace shall flow forth. That grace shall flow forth to stay people worldwide to, to, to invest in this ministry in the name of Jesus. That grace shall flow forth to cause the businesses of the brethren connected to this ministry to know to, to know to know exploit to, to prosper to prosper to prosper speed accelerated prosperity accelerated prosperity in the name of Jesus we pray for ideas we pray for ideas that bring forth words we pray for ideas to be birthed from our bosom to bring forth words ideas that will come out and produce words for the kingdom in the name of Jesus we pray for our businesses to be known to expand and bring forth words for the advancement of the kingdom we release this grace we release this grace we release this grace we release this grace grace for supernatural connections grace for supernatural connections grace for supernatural contacts grace for supernatural helpers in the name of Jesus we release this grace upon Bishop Robinson Dr. Lee all the team in Tanzania we release this grace for supernatural connections we release this grace for supernatural helpers we release this grace for ideas to come forth in the name of Jesus yes Lord we thank you God for the abundance the abundance the abundance Lord for wealth in abundance Lord in the name of Jesus Christ we speak to the families at Miracle Center we declare abundance the grace oh God of more than enough the grace of all sufficiency in all things we break the resistance that has stood against wealth in the families we break resistance that has stood against against the church we release the grace the great all sufficiency grace the abundant grace oh the grace of more than enough we thank you God for innovative ideas we shall invest in the right business we shall invest in the right domain, le braka sanda baka, le braka shara baka, creative ideas, oh God, le bali baka. We speak for oh God, this grace we release, this grace and the families, le braka sanda baka, the grace of God to create things, the grace to be found at the right place, with the right contact, le braka shara baka, le brita sanda baka rabali ba, le braka shara baka, the grace to be favored, to be awarded the contract of billions. We release the grace for supernatural connections. Supernatural connections. Oh, Natarandaraba, shake it, Rebebebebe. Grace for help us. Grace for help us. Oh, Joseph, Joseph needed a helper to take him to the palace. Grace for help us, grace for help us, grace for help us. Grace for help us. Yes, Lord. Oh, we release that grace in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. We release it on the businesses of the brethren. Yes, Lord. We release it in the lives of the brethren. Yes, Lord. We release that grace in Miracle Lord. Center. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace for supernatural connections. Grace for supernatural helpers. People positioned along your pathway to help you enter into inner circles where you will never have entered. To help you sign those contracts that you will never have signed. We release that grace 
grace in the name of Jesus. We release that grace in the name of Jesus. The grace to break forth where it seems impossible. Yes, Lord. The grace to break forth where it seems impossible. Yes, Lord. The grace to accomplish that which by your own strength, natural strength, you will not have been able to do it. That grace, we release it in the name of Jesus. We release it in the name of Jesus. We release it in the name of Jesus. We speak that grace in the lives here. We speak that grace in the lives of anyone connected to this ministry. We speak that grace into the businesses. The grace to break fallow grounds. The grace to break new grounds. The grace to break new grounds. The grace to break new grounds. Brethren, I want to ask people just one question. When you hear the number of church, churches that this church is planting, you think that is normal. When you hear the amount of money that is released every year for evangelism, for church planting, you think it's normal. There is a grace at work. There is a grace at work. And what you don't see, you cannot connect to. What you don't understand, you cannot have. What you don't see, you cannot connect to. That means that you can be here and that grace is flowing and blessing multitudes and you sit there and you miss it. Just as an unbeliever can be around believers and go to hell because he has not seen the grace for salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a grace in this house. When Bishop stands here, and talks about a need in Ethiopia and someone online releases $25,000 to meet that need. You think that it is because that person, by, why was that person watching at the time at which that need was released? Mm -hmm. He could have left his seat to go to the restroom and come back when that need has passed. There is a grace at work. Amen. There is a grace at work. And may we connect to that grace. Amen. May the businesses here connect to that grace. Amen. Amen. We connect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, open our eyes yes, Lord. that we will see. Yes, Lord. Open our hearts that we will understand. Grant us understanding, Lord. Grant us understanding, Lord. Grant us understanding, Lord. And the grace to connect to this grace that is at work in this house. This a grace for abundance. This grace for abundance. This grace for all sufficiency. This grace, oh God, to be able to have, to be able to carry out, meet every good work. Yes, Lord. When this grace is operating on you, listen, brethren, in the same way as there is the prophetic grace, you know there is a prophetic grace, right? There is a healing grace. There's an evangelistic grace. There are people who can stand on the stage and spend just one minute and thousands of people come to Christ. There are others who stand on the stage and pray and, and, and sweat the way I'm sweating. And when they give, I make an altar call, nobody comes up. That guy has the evangelistic grace on him. It's not a gift, it's a grace. The prophetic grace the healing grace. When somebody has that grace on him, you know, this verse, this verse carries a lot. There is also the grace to make wealth. There's also the grace to make wealth. And you have to release it. If you don't release it, it remains dormant. Because in Christ, I have everything. But that which I identify and connect to, it flows in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God, may you help me. Amen. May you help us. May you help us. May you help us to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me share the next verse and then I will stop. 2 Corinthians, when this grace is released in me and I start seeing the flow, how do I maintain the flow? Verse 11. 
verse 11. And in verse 11, we will be re releasing the grace for seed multiplication. The grace for seed multiplication. But now, you also must complete the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also... May no, 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 that is not it. That is not it. Verse 10, please. Let's see verse 10. Where, where, where they talk about seed, God will give bread for food and seed to sow. Verse 10. Are we there? Now may he who supply seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. When the widow, that widow who went to the prophet, the prophet's wife who died, the prophet died. Remember in the Old Testament, I think it's First Kings or Second Kings. He went to the prophet, man of God, my husband has died. And he left me with a lot of debts. And the people he owed have come to take me and my children and sell me to pay the debt. What did the prophet ask her? What have you? Right? When Moses met the Lord, met, met God, and God told him, go and set the Israelites free. He said, Lord, I, I, I cannot even speak. I have nothing. And the Lord asked him, what have you in your hands? He said, I have the stick. He said, throw it on the ground. And that became that became the source of his power since we are in the Old Testament, right? When this guy, the Lord Jesus Christ, is with these 5,000 people, he was with the 3,000, and they are hungry, and, 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 the, and, 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 the, and, the, and the apostles come to him and say, Lord, these people have nothing to eat. And so say, what was the question he asked? What is there? What do people have? So there's a boy here with some pieces of fish and bread. Bring it. We all have something. We all have something that God is asking, what have you? Is it a business you've created? Okay, I'll multiply the business. Is it that talent that you have? Okay, I'll multiply it. What have you? What have you? Is it that salary that you are getting, that wage that you are getting every month, every two weeks? In that wage, there is a seed to sow and there is bread for food. That talent that you have, whatever thing that talent prov provides for you, has in its seed to sow and bread for food. But if you read that passage well, you realize that God does not multiply the food. He multiplies the seed. So the problem is, we eat our seed and our food. And you know, it is very bad. Because you remember in the New Testament, the parable of the sowers. No, the parable of the seeds. The guys who had the talents. The one who had his one talent. He went and buried it. And the Lord, what did the Lord tell him? His punishment, go and read it. He was sent to hell. He did not eat his seed. He didn't eat it. What did he do? He buried it and brought it back to the Lord. But when you read this verse, you realize that in most cases we eat our seed. So we do worse than that guy. But that guy was sent to hell because he did not multiply his seed. Am I speaking gibberish or am I speaking scriptures? Do you know the passage I'm talking about? What was the verdict that the Lord gave in that passage? Throw him where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is that? In Revelation, they give us a definition of that place. Because he did not multiply his seed. Do you see how serious it is? We, in most cases, eat our own seeds. The wage that you have. Do you put aside the seed and take care of and use the rest for your bread? That is your mortgage and all that and the food. 
In most cases, we eat everything plus the seed. Hallelujah. And then we wonder that this grace for multiplication is not manifested in our lives. God is not the problem. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's what the Bible says. Pardon? It is different. The tithe is for God. It's part of the seed. But there is also the investment. God expects you to keep part of it. Now, if we are talking about business, if we have a business class, or a business encounter, I'll expound more on that. Hallelujah. But there is the, when, you, when you take your wage and you remove your tithe, you should keep aside some seed. No, not forgiving. Not forgiving. For investing. Investment. For investing. You should save. You should not eat everything. That's what this verse is talking about. This verse is not talking about tithes and offering. It's talking about investing. <laughs> you know, in that talent, when you read where the Bible talks about the talent, somewhere he talks about what? He talks about money. Yes. Yes. It could be your salary. It could be money. It could be your talent. It could be everything. We'll talk about that when we get to The talent gives you money, right? It gives you wages now. From the wages as a result of your talent, you have to keep aside a seat and then food for bread. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. So, the, in this verse, we are told, so this verse releases what? The grace, it releases the grace for seed multiplication. The verse now, this verse 10, it releases the grace for seed multiplication. It is a grace for seed multiplication, and I want us to pray about it, the grace to produce more fruits of righteousness, the grace for enrichment in everything for all liberality, the grace to be a catalyst of thanksgiving and gratitude to God. That's what this verse 10 releases. The grace for multiplication. The grace to be a catalyst for, for, for gratitude to God. Because when you have that multiplication and you meet the needs of the poor, for example, they thank God. And that's the reason why God blesses us. That's the reason why God multiplies our seed. That's the reason why God uses us to bring wealth into his kingdom. It's not for us to go and live in, to, uh, to go and take care of ourselves. Taking care of ourselves is part of it. But God uses us to be a channel of blessing to others, a channel of provision to his kingdom, a channel of provision for the advancement of his kingdom. Everything. Hallelujah. So, God blesses me to be a blessing. That's why it is said that all blessing comes from God through man to God. On another part, all blessing comes from God through man to man. In other words, if, if, if Dr. Ray has a need, God will not leave heaven to come and meet his need. God will pass through man to meet his need. So all blessing comes from God through man to man. And that's the reason why God provides for us to be a channel of his blessings to man. Hallelujah. All blessing also comes from God through man back to God. How? When God blesses me, I bring the tithes, I bring the offerings, I bring the gifts to the house of God so that missionaries can then go to Tanzania and therefore so that uh, 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 missionaries in Tanzania can go to other places to preach the gospel because of the blessings that God has brought to me through me for his kingdom. You get the difference? You get, you get the difference? All blessings come from God through man to man to man to man. All blessings come from God through man to God, to God. So, these lights is paid because of the offerings and the tithes we give, but also because Sarah, for example, can be blessed in her business and she comes and she asks, okay, how much is worth the bill, the, the electric bill in this place every month? Forget about it. I'll take care of it as a gift. All blessings come from God through man to God. 
That is the essence of these two verses we are sharing. Hallelujah. So that grace, so that thanksgiving is gone back to God. So can we, can we pray the last prayer topic and I'll hand over to Dr. Ray. Can, I just want someone to pray that God will grant us the grace for seed multiplication. That will understand how to multiply the seed that he gives us. That he should give you understanding. Hallelujah. Grace for seed multiplication. Grace to produce more fruits for righteousness. The grace for enrichment in, every, in everything for all liberality. The grace for enrichment. The grace to be a catalyst of thanksgiving and gratitude to God. Who doesn't want to be a catalyst of thanksgiving and gratitude to God? I mean, if, 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 if my brother uh, 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 has a need, hallelujah, if Pastor Fred, Reverend Freddy has a need, his car is broken, and then he stands up and he's praying, oh Lord, grant me the grace to be able to get some money to fix my car. And then, and then uh, 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 Josiah says, brother, at the end of the meeting, he says, brother, I have a car. I'll offer you a car. And he buys a car and he offers it to him. What will be Reverend Freddy's reaction? Reverend Fraser will receive, but he will not end there. He will praise the Lord the whole day. He will praise God the whole day. That is one of the reasons why God blesses his children. So that they will generate praises unto him. Hallelujah. You now understand. Can we pray for that grace? I want to be a catalyst of God's blessings. I want to be a catalyst for, for praise unto God. Hallelujah. I was sharing, a sister was giving me, talking to me. I was sharing this morning, uh, for those who were on the prayer line at five, a sister was sharing uh, with me, uh, one of our brothers we prayed for, uh, who, was, who was suffering, who, who had to be evacuated to, Indi to India. And it needed a child of God in a position of authority to touch people of authority, to be able to release the means, release the means for him to be flown to India. Hallelujah. You think that this brother, having gone to India, having been treated, he's now well. He was almost dying in Cameroon. Now he is, he's well. You think that when he takes the microphone to praise God, have you seen the way Sister Anita praises God here? Sister Anita, who usually sits here, our brother's, brother Johnson, Elder Johnson's wife, when she's praising God, you see somebody who gives grace. She's giving thanks to God. Hallelujah. For having saved her life. I want to be a catalyst of thanksgiving to God. I want to be so blessed that I can meet the need of everybody I meet around me. Because whether he's a believer or an unbeliever, he will give praises to God. And that's why we, that's what God wants us to be. Amen. Can you, you want to pray brother? You want to pray? Please, feel free. Oh, dear Heavenly Father. Well, before I pray, I, I just was thinking when uh, 